about four years ago, in 2010, uh, Ben had noticed some lumps he had on his posterior. Um, being a former naturopathic physician's assistant, he could kind of almost predict that it might be cancer, but he wasn't quite sure. He got blown off by his family doctor. He wasn't uh, going to give us a referral. So he told him it was a calcium deposit. Don't worry about it. But he was already growing some marijuana for the purpose of um, dealing with his, uh, his uh, heart condition, um, kind of keeping his blood pressure at a, at a rate where it would give him you know, a little bit of energy and uh, kind of turn off the gravity amplifier. He'd been watching um, YouTube. He saw the YouTube show on, um, I guess, the, the Rick Simpson story. Ah. And when Run he learned about cure, that, right? Run From the Cure. Oh. And so he, uh, he decided to apply that, just thinking, you know, this, might, this, this lump might be uh, cancer. And he applied it, and he thought, well, if it's not, let's just see what it does. Well, he had a golf ball-sized, well, he found out later it was a tumor. Uh, and after applying it topically for a, within about two months, it shrank down to the size of a, well, down to a little pink spot. I mean, it, it uh, went below the surface of his skin and disappeared. So eventually, um, someone must have called the police thinking they smelled marijuana in our apartment. And, uh, and so we were raided. And he had, he had shown the, the police officer what he had been using the marijuana for, that he was making cannabis oil. And he even, uh, even showed him, you know, uh, how he applied it before he confiscated it, before the, the officer Furlong, Detective Furlong, confiscated it. Um, so we were arrested. We went through a year of um, basically firing attorneys, trying to get someone who would represent us and not force us to plea out. And then eventually, um, we just gave up on that and went ahead and took a guilty plea of manufacturing. He wanted to present a medical defense. No one was going to hear it, and they just weren't going to go with it. So we've been, we had been on probation for a couple of years. Um, during the, uh, the first couple of months uh, in 2011, he had gone to, um, finally got a referral to an oncologist who came back with a result um, after giving him a biopsy that it was, in fact, uh, angiosarcoma cancer. It is a cancer of the inner lining of the blood vessels, which appears as uh, tumors on the skin, uh, above the, the surface of the skin. And so while on probation, Ben decided to just try to get a hold of whatever plant material he could. Uh, sometimes ditch weed, friends would harvest some out of the field. You know, in Iowa, it just grows everywhere. Um, and he would make uh, canna cannabis oil out of that. Sometimes he had to go to the street to buy cannabis oil. But eventually, you know, he was able to acquire just enough for, a, a, you know, a couple of grams here or there. Um, he would ingest them. And he was, he was able to keep the tumors from growing. And some of them would even shrink. You know, some of the smaller ones especially. Mm -hmm. Now, this went on for... Well, about two and a half years, and then in June 2013, well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, he started growing cannabis in a, in a trailer in the backyard. Um, his best friend helped him, and uh, he had all uh, higher CBD strains. I think he had um, canatonic, which I think came from some Z7s, uh, seeds, um, that he'd ordered from Mr. Nice. I think, mm -hmm. and so he had uh, he had plants that were, you know, eventually going to possibly, you know, if he could acquire enough, uh, he could make enough oil to maybe wipe out this cancer. Because at this point, it was at stage one; they were really small tumors. Well, and then 2013, June of two thir 2013, um, we were raided, and they brought about 20 SWAT agents uh, in it. 5:45 a.m. to the house, um, banging on the door, screaming. Uh, I was the first one to the door, and I had <laughs> about uh, well about six agents pointing, you know, 
some pretty high powered uh, weaponry in my face. Um, so, you know, we kind of scared the crap out of all of us. Um, I can imagine. Or actually, <laughs> I've been in that situation myself, <laughs> yeah. so well, I know what that's like. Yeah, and, and his elderly parents were upstairs. You know, it, it uh, kind of it shocked them. Um, there was just the five of us living there. So yeah. they ended up prosecuting yeah. all five of you, though. They did. The they parents, did. your son, mm -hmm. both of you. Yeah. That's just outrageous. Yeah. You know, that's what they is. do is they, they try to pile on as many charges as they possibly can so they can then manipulate you to do what they want you to do. Like, we're going mm -hmm. to torture your wife and your son and your parents if you don't do exactly what we say to do. You know, it's disgusting, yeah. you know, that yeah. our law enforcement has, has turned to this. It's really mm -hmm. the prosecutors and the police are in charge of the whole system and choosing how to charge you and uh, uh, make you, you know, dance to their tune or else, right? Yeah, it appeared that way. I, I they, uh, they didn't arrest his parents, but they did charge them with operating a drug house. Kind of makes it sound How like a meth lab. How old are your parents, lab. Benton? What are they? 70. They're um, respectively, I think, 70. At the time, they were 76 and 77 years old. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Benton, oh, I just got to let our audience know you, you've been the recipient of some beneficial cannabis oil here in Oregon as a legal medical marijuana patient. I'm proud to say that, you know, we were able to help you get that medical marijuana permit and have helped you out with some medicine in the past. But yeah. I know, but right now you're on a pretty big dose of, I'm of a, a, uh, RSO oil. A heavy, so, heavy dose, yeah. yeah. Six grams a day. That's a lot. Yeah. That six grams is, in fact, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody taking six grams in a single day. So yeah. that's a lot. I figured you vaporized twice that much. You would oh. think so. But <laughs> no, no, it's not true. Maybe. I know. wish I could. Uh -huh. well, half of my right lung is full of tumors I just found out. So now that cancer has metastasized to your lungs and where else? And my liver. Your um, liver and your lungs. And so... You've just been convicted when? About 10 days ago? Uh, just about two weeks ago, yeah. About two weeks ago. And so, fortunately, you're, you're with a bond, the state has allowed you to come here and visit Oregon a few right. times. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, they, yeah, they started letting me come here so I could survive to make it to the end of trial. Right. So I could. Good point. Can you want to go on with the story, Loretta, and what happened? Uh, sure. Well, there? when we were arrested, um, his parents had bonded us out. Um, but a couple of weeks later, uh, because we'd been on probation, our probation officers uh, <laughs> issued warrants for our arrest again. So back to jail we went. Uh, this time, there was a $5,000 cash-only bond held over both of us. And so his parents being you know, broke, completely unable to get us out. And they couldn't do anything about it. We uh, ended up staying there. Well, he stayed in for 40 days. Um, he was uh, he was constantly trying to draw to the attention of the medical staff his tumors, which were starting to grow um, without anything. Um, and I've got to say that I've seen some pictures of your tumors online. And I'm just very sorry that you have to endure such painful lesions there. They look uh, like look pretty bad. I've seen some other people with sarcoma okay. back before they had the antiviral agents mm -hmm. when people were dying from AIDS. Yeah. Kind of reminded me of that. And it's a similar kind of cancer, isn't it? Yeah. I imagine it's very I similar. I think it's, yeah. it might be mm -hmm. the same form that ended up killing so many AIDS patients as you have a compromised uh, immune system. That too, my uh, immune system is not quite as compromised as it could as some be, as they or probably should be, actually. Yeah, but, but you've yeah. got this, this rare form of cancer. So you wanna tell us about the trial, uh, Loretta? Yes, um, well, we it, it, it's taken several months since uh, we got out of jail. Um, we had uh, pretty good representation, uh, each of us. Um, they had a lot of different things that they wanted to do. Um, 
they wanted to try to see if they could get all of the evidence suppressed and the whole case thrown out of court because we live in a rural area in Iowa. It's on private property. And so when the police had been going through our trash to try to find something, they said they found a stem and that was the justification for the warrant. They had been trespassing on a private drive. So we had upcoming motions, uh, hearings for the motions on uh, suppression to try to see if the, the warrant was even valid. Um, all of these different, different things. So it, it's taken, um, it, well, it's taken an entire year since the uh, original uh, raid. Um, but we wanted a jury of our peers and our, you know, fortunately we had attorneys who were, you know, with it all the way. They were filing motions. They were doing everything they could. And um, problem is his good attorney lost her license because, well, it doesn't seem to make any sense. She had been doing a lot of work for him. And I think that there was somebody higher up trying to kind of cut her out of the way. And as, yeah, you know, as I'll, as I'll describe to you what happened during the trial, sort of the control, yet mind control, or just wanting to have another conviction no matter what, uh, it seemed like uh, it was not a fair trial. The judge would not allow a medical defense. Um, he wouldn't even allow Ben to tell the jury that he had cancer. He wasn't even allowed to discuss his condition. Um, at so all. the jury had no idea what you folks were facing or the very reason you were doing this. And then they also prosecuted your son. Yes. Yeah. And well, his friend originally, but they they offered a plea agreement to his friend, and I guess he took it because he was very he was very scared. Uh, he wasn't going to be throwing us under the bus, mind you. He just he had been looking for an opportunity to become a state's witness so that it would give him an opportunity to when, you know, taking the witness stand to, to just, you know, risk all, risk getting thrown in contempt of court to say, look, this is what my friend was going through. I was helping him. He has cancer. He was making cannabis oil. Well, th it seemed like the state was pretty much on to the strategy of our defense and they didn't allow that. It controlled uh, every aspect, every, every aspect of the, the jury trial, and it took a good three days to even select a jury because so many people had already read um, newspaper articles that um, the Quad City Times uh, writer uh, Brian Wellner had been following up on our story since September mm -hmm. of uh, last year, and just there was just so much control, and uh, you know constantly. Uh, keeping the jury in the dark. They would take them in the other room to address issues going on with Ben's health. Um, he needed to take a lot of breaks. And then on the 7th of July, uh, right in the middle of the trial, he pretty much collapsed. He had, um, we had to rush him to the hospital, called an ambulance, and his uh, potassium levels and his hemoglobin had just dropped. Uh, he'd been sweating uh, profusely. Um, just having cold sweats for the last couple of months. Because at this point, he's at stage four of his cancer. Um, everything metastasized when he was in jail. So it just kind of went from stage one to st stage three to stage four in a matter of months. So well, he's, at, he's, at the, he's at the point now where cold sweats and you know nausea and things like that start to set in. So I mean, this, this happened. Um, you know, without the jury having any idea. They were just shoved off to their little deliberation room, probably under lock and key and not allowed to even look out the window and see the fire trucks that, you know, came pulling up in front of the, uh, the ambulance pulling up in front of the courthouse. Hmm. And the judge was not uh, very understanding, like he promised he would be about Ben's condition. He, uh, he basically uh, thought that Ben was malingering, that maybe he was faking something to try to get out of this trial, it, which is not the case at all. We, we got him to the hospital and they had to give him a transfusion. And uh, the doctor's orders were, no, he's not going anywhere tonight. He's staying here. We're going to watch over him. And the next morning they were trying to address, you know, keeping him, uh, keeping his pain medication stabilized and all of those things. But the judge was insistent, well, he needs to be back the next morning. We need to get on with this trial. So it was just, it was inhumane. It's incredibly inhumane. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm ashamed 
for our government that's done this to you. And, uh, you know, I wish I could offer you sanctuary here in Oregon. I mean, maybe we can put you in a local church or something, you know, <laughs> and uh, say, yeah. you know, no more. You know, they're in the safe zone. You know, they, that's an ancient concept that we should have something like that, I think, especially mm -hmm. for someone going through that. It's just heartbreaking. Well, we appreciate it, too. There's just no way we could bow out of this fight now. Right. Now, what do you think? Well, they, they mentioned an appeal bond. Right now, you're here in Oregon on a bond. Uh, do, do you think it's likely? Have you had any communication that says you might be allowed to continue to be on appeal bond? Well, I'm actually not on a, a bond. My, my wife is out on bond, but I, they let me out of jail to avoid any medical expenses. I see, I see. So uh, technically until uh, sentencing, if they sentence me to any jail time or any anything at all, they're gonna try to put me in prison. I don't know if they'll wait until I apply uh, or appeal it before they try to put me in jail. Otherwise, if they put me in jail, then I can bond out from there. Probably, Casper. Yeah, I was just all the support that seems to be rallying around the case and all that you've gone through. I know in California they have groups that show up at courthouses with uh, signs and make a lot of noise outside. So yeah, any community hard support? To ignore. Has there been? There was noise of it happening, but we haven't seen a lot. So you're uh, in a little area though. Anyway. There's not any big urban area except Des Moines in, in Iowa, right? So uh, for its area, uh, the Quad Cities area is, is pretty big. It's uh, it's about Iowa City uh, size, maybe even I bigger. See. But the, the community support's been really, really And why did you have there. such a problem with your attorneys taking your case in the direction you wanted? I mean, it's your case. Um, I was saddled with him in the last, with a month to go before uh, jury selection, and then uh, I wasn't even contacted by him for another two weeks. So we had two weeks to go to build a case, and first thing uh, he wanted was to try to deal with this on a on a a, a, a plea, and I just demanded he never ever <laughs> enter into that train of thought again and that's when we started clashing but he he had plans on trying to change things instead of being straight with me and backing out when I still had time to give somebody else exactly the same chance he had to at least support me or Loretta how do you think uh, things are going to go for yourself and your son and your, your husband here do you have any insight or just hopes and prayers hopes and prayers mostly uh yeah it's it's been suggested that we'll have um i well i i did talk to his former attorney and she said something about appeals bond so i'm really not completely you know educated about that whole process we sure. have talked to a couple other people who have been through this process before who think that we are uh, in a position to wait. I really don't, at this point, I don't think after all the attention that this judge, Henry Latham, uh, has, has had, which has not been the right kind of attention. He's, he certainly is not a hero. Now everyone in Iowa and basically nationwide, since the story went out on the Associated Press, it's been everywhere. Uh, he, they've had to f shut down the phone lines to mm -hmm. uh, his, yeah, his lines and uh, the prosecutor's uh, phone lines, and uh, there's just been so, so Good. many people calling. I, I think When is your sentencing coming up? You're here in Oregon for just a yeah. few days, like a week or less than a week? 28th. Yeah, it'll, the uh, sentencing is on August 28th. August 28th. So you want people yeah. to contact this judge and uh, mm -hmm. to be there in support of you on August 28th, obviously. There is, there is also a group on uh, Facebook, Free, Free Benton, Benton McKenzie. So it's yes. facebook.com slash Free Benton. Yeah, and e Free Benton McKenzie, McKenzie is actually the public group. Oh, okay. Yes, and uh, freebenton.org is the website that some, some local people did put together. Um, but uh, they do have some 
they do have uh, a, basically an event coming up, and there are quite a few people that are planning on being there. I guess Where I'm not that sure. At? That will be at the Scott County Courthouse there, in yeah, Davenport, yeah. Iowa. I see. So we will have some people showing up, maybe with picket signs, maybe just to show up in the courtroom if, you know, if they'll let them in. They so what's this judge's name in Scott County, Iowa, Davenport, Iowa? Yes. What's it's his name? Judge Henry Latham. Henry Latham. All right. Yeah.